Best of downtown Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the LA Chargers. That's Cameron Dicker set to get us started. And we are underway here in Los Angeles. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. CD always more eyes on these night games, and they started it off nicely there on that run. Yeah, and you're exactly right. Don't think for a second these players don't know and understand that. They want to impress their peers across the league. They also want to win the ball game. That's the way to get things going. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. And unable to get downhill there, so he'll take this up to about the 37. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. The defense was ready for the run pass option. Diagnosed it perfectly. Not only did they stack him up at the point of attack, but he was met by a host of light-colored jerseys. Off the play fake, Cousins. Blitz coming, and down he goes. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, right on the clash. That because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and the line blocking. But to me, it seems so. Yeah, well, there, and certainly that leads to a play action sack. A surprising move here on the opening drive of the game, and this defense holds on the night's opening drive. Running on first down, Eckler. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. For the first play of the drive, lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. And now a fumble. The ball's out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And a little careless there, Charles, on that carry. And it's not just having two hands on the ball. It's tucking it away. It's using your body to keep people shielded off. It's so many different things into taking care of it and having ball security. In that case, though, we didn't see it happen. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. I can assure you setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense. And a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. They'll go Madison up the middle. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Third and four. Now Cousins. Oh, he had him. He was 
It's open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get on track in this one. Now Cousins on fourth down. And they hit him as he throws. As this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And that will force a turnover on downs. Five nine, five nine. Really? Herbert setting up to throw on first down. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Herbert. That's going to be caught. It's Palmer. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Here we go now on first and goal. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And he takes it in for a charger touchdown. Boston Eckler, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And that makes the score 7-0. Now after the Dicker field goal, he's back out ready to send it away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. Sebastian Joseph Day breaking through for the sack. Well, they got the lead, but it's certainly not a big one. And how do you keep control of that lead? Certainly not by that last play there. They gave up a big sack on the first play of this drive. Now it's double the distance to the first down marker. Throwing on second and long. Cousins. And he rips that one incomplete there. Another incompletion there. That's five in a row now to start this game. He's got to take a deep breath now. Step back, shake it off a little bit, trust his offensive line, and hope that his play caller dials up something that can give him a completion and get him going. They're looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. Picked up by Michael Davis. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. Well, Brandon, there's no question who they're going to look to on third and long, but you can bet this defense knows that as well, so they've got him blanketed downfield. And this ball winds up being intercepted. Now a give running left is Eckler. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. So the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Ready. Once more, here's Eckler. And that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. And no move to get Herbert off the field. They're going for this. They'll run for it with Eckler. And this is going to come up well short as they stop him on fourth down. The fourth down play doesn't work for the Chargers. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. 
And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to have to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. A first down throw for Cousins. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. Look at the big fella go. Touchdown, Vikings. T.J. Hawkinson, 60 yards. And the Vikings are an extra point away from evening this one up. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call, but he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From his end zone, here's Darius Davis. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. The Charger drive about to get going. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality of this goal? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you got to make sure you nurse him through and say, okay, don't worry about it. When we need you, you got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit in the same spot again. We'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's Eckler again. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Here's Herbert. Flushed out right. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Justin Herbert looking to pass. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. An assortment of sacks in this game. This one the product of a good jump and terrific effort. Moves quickly off the snap of the ball. Doesn't let up until he's in the backfield and impacting the quarterback. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Hey, Kappa, 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 Kappa. They snap it to Herbert. It's taken in by Quentin Johnston. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. Boy, a real head scratcher there. And it'll be a turnover on downs. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. 
On first and ten, Cousins. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Michael Davis. And the Chargers are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively. And you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. The good signal calls will never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive go, go, play? Go. Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football and now zapped right back in the other direction. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. You can easily see the logic. It's a tie game. They just wanted to press it a little bit right before the half, hoping to get one more score. Yeah, easy to second guess the result, but now you have to think after that interception, just a field goal, and they're behind at the break. Yeah, I think at the half, the head coach just says, look, that's on me. I wanted to press it, but it's because I believe in you. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson as the first half is winding down. And the Vikings have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. Now that was simply frustrating for the defense. They did everything they were supposed to, including putting a hit on the quarterback as he delivered the ball. Yet, it still resulted in a touchdown against them. Joseph now to have the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Charger drive about to get going. And yeah, the ball backed way up, so thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it. And we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. So first and 10 now from the 30. First and 10 at the 30 yard line. Back to throw here, Herbert. On the screen, this is Eckler. Finding space at the 40. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. A good passing down here. They send three receivers to the right of the formation on second down. A final shot before the break for Herbert. Williams brings it in. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A one-touchdown ball game, 14-7. Our scores, we get back at it on EA Sports. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Charger drive about to get going. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, They've been playing pretty well, and they've kept them around in this game. 
Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. So they take a decent shot, CD, and the flag comes out for pass interference. Yeah, a little DPI, as they like to call it in the business, right? And the farther you get downfield, the more frenetic things get and the more calm and controlled you have to remain as a defender. That was a little bit of a slip there, and the penalty will go against him. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. On second down, here's Herbert. Flush to his right. And he wisely will throw that one away. At this point in the second half, one mistake on a forced throw could doom your chances of a comeback. So that's the right call there to just throw that one away. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Here's Herbert. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on four. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. He's airing it out for Williams. That is incomplete. A surprising move to go for it predictably, at least somewhat predictably. It doesn't pay off. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Here's Madison running on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Running for the first time with a fullback, C.J. Ham. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground honed in on it, and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. On third down, they run to Madison. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that could all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. The Charger drive about to get going. And they're coming off a fourth down gamble that last drive that backfired CD, but really not as badly as it could. Their defense held up and only gave up three points. And what they want to do is play off the momentum of the defense. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play there for LA. 43 yards. Oh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. Baylor tight. On first down, Justin Herbert. That is 
is incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yes, yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Kind of a fine line when you're setting up the screen. You don't want to throw it too early and have the defense react too quickly. And you definitely don't want to throw it too late, and that way it's not formed perfectly. You've got to make sure you hit it just right. Ready. Play action. It's Herbert. They'll roll him out right. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Touchdown, Chargers. Keenan Allen, 36 yards. And the Chargers are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. No gain on the play there, second down. going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Cousins now on second down. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. He was trying to find his tight end, Josh Oliver. And it'll bring up third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Now a give to Madison, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. I know we just saw a nice throwing catch, but how about the big guys up front buying that time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. It created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. He's got his running back out of the backfield, and he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 40. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. 
Here's Cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. It appears they found something that's working, and they keep going back to it. I guess you can actually say he has the hot hands now, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's one thing to hit your guy out of the backfield once, hit him a couple times. Yeah, you're right. Maybe they're on to something. And I think a lot of that is simply if you get it to him in space, more times than not, he's going to get more yardage. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. Oh, this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. On the handoff, it's Madison. And he will be stopped here for no gain, and then it's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Well, this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Cousins. It's a touchdown. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. Well, now how about this return? He's to midfield. Still going past the 30. And he will score. Touchdown, Chargers. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hand steam ready. No doubt about it. They get one more as the extra points up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So they got their touchdown. Now down a field goal. Here comes the onside kick. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see him take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. Well, the league's best linebackers, he ended that play almost before it began. And the running back absolutely overmatched no matter what he tried to do. Cousins here to throw. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. 
tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This would be a critical call. and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Cousins. Oh, he had to force it there on fourth down, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Michael Davis. Racing to the end zone. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. So they go on fourth down. Not only do they not get it, it turns into six points the other way. Disastrous. And many people think you should just go ahead and knock it down in that situation. Turn it over for the offense. But I had a defensive coordinator recently tell me, we see that as a passive play. We don't do that anymore. We want the ball in our hands, and we want to head the other way. It's probably also instinct a lot of times. If you see a lot of green grass ahead of you, go ahead and grab it. It's the exact right play to do. That's knowing when to break the rules and when to make a play that maybe you hadn't been taught. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. This is first and 10. Now Cousins. Making the catch. This is the tight end, Oliver. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Cousins to throw. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Here's Cousins. This goes out wide for Madison. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. Now second and four. Back to throw. Pass complete to Addison. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. One last shot now for Cousins. This is caught, and he's in for the game-winning score with no time left on the clock. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory, and a little bit of a surprise, they lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ballgame. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ballgames. So when you get something that goes against the grain, like the